In this video, I will give you an overview of the periodic table of the elements Power BI report that I had recently published up to the data stories gallery. Uh, I received several questions on how certain aspects of the report were built. So in other uh, short videos that I'll be publishing along this one, along with this one, uh, you will be able to see in Power BI desktop how certain things were constructed. But for this video, just as a general overview to the periodic table, uh, you can see that I have the, the standard layout, as you would see it on maybe a printed page, uh, with different colors for the different element blocks. But one of the things that Power BI allows me to do is uh, bring some interactivity to the table by hovering over the different points. In this case, it's a simple scatter plot visual that uh, is used to create the table here. But by hovering over them, I expose a report page tooltip which gives me filtered information for each of the elements. There's also a button up here where I can click and compare trends. And the secret technology behind this is simply bookmarking. And when the bookmark is displayed, uh, it's showing and hiding certain visuals. So it's actually not a different report page. If I click back here, it's simply a bookmark that is showing and hiding certain things. And we'll get into the uh, the structure of how that's built in a separate video. Uh, what's unique about this visualization is that I have a slicer up at the top that will change the uh, conditional formatting for the scatter plot based on uh, the slicer selection. If I click back and then click on compare, the final major area of the report is another scatter plot. But in this case, I have the ability to dynamically adjust what displays on both the X and the Y axis to try to tease out or compare different trends as well. So if I look at the default atomic number selection and maybe I change uh, my Y axis from electronegativity to boiling point, uh, these are different measures in the data set, but they're also functioning on the axis. So we'll look at a DAX measure that I had created uh, that helps me combine uh, the different uh, values here across these different measures. So uh, stick with me and in this other series of short videos uh, you'll be able to break down how this was built uh, kind of page by page.